So you found some really interesting ways to extend the ideas that are presented on these videos. We started off describing shapes and I'm going to show you a, a way in which someone has kind of adapted that challenge and some of the odd one out uh, examples you've sent through. Well, I just could never have imagined them. So we're going to have a look at some of those as well. Um, then I'm going to introduce a, a task from something that I call IC problem solving, where again, you're going to be comparing different shapes, doing it in different ways. Really looking forward to it and uh, good luck again today. As always, I can't help but smile when I see all the different things that happen with the tasks and ways that people explore these ideas. So this was one of my favourites. Think back to the, the first two days of this week when we were drawing pictures and one person would describe the picture and the other one would draw it. Well, a family friend of ours did this and they did it with blocks. So one person would, would make a picture with blocks and then the other person would have to try and make exactly the same image. Um, exactly the same creation with the blocks. And I thought, what a great idea. It's not something we're going to do now, but I thought that would be a brilliant thing to, to have a go at if you were able to. Um, but we also had these amazing odd one out examples sent through. I, I'd never thought of examples like these. So have a look at this one. Why could each coin be the odd one out? Pause the video. I wonder which reasons you came up with. Well, I'll tell you what my ones were. Um, I thought the 10 piece the other one out because it doesn't have a the digit 2 anywhere on the coin. Um, I thought the 20p is the odd one out because it's not circular. And I thought the 2p was the odd one out because it's a copper coin. I wonder what I wonder what you saw there. Now have a look at this one. This was a creative one as well. So thank you, Harry. Harry in year five. But I, I asked him in, and he's let me use it on, on this video. So we've got the, the hamburger, the chips and the strawberry milkshake. Ooh. Which one's the odd one out? This time, pause the video. Which one could it be? Now, I'm sure you'll come up with all kinds of different answers for this one. I'll tell you what I went for. I thought, well, the burger is the odd one out because the other ones are in cardboard. Um, so that's why the burger is the odd one out. I had to really think about why the chips were the odd one out. What I went for in the end is there are lots of them. So the strawberry milkshake, there's like one strawberry milkshake, there's one burger, but there's lots of chips. So that's what I thought. I wonder what if that's what Harry was thinking. Um, and then I thought, no, the strawberry milkshake's the odd one out because it's a drink. I wonder, I, again, I wonder what you came up with. Just some brilliant examples and we'll have a look at some more again tomorrow. Well, I have really enjoyed this unit on shapes so far. You've really had to think deeply about shapes and the properties and similarities and differences. And of course, we're going to extend that even further today um, with our shape properties challenge. Now, a lot of today's work, we're actually going to do it kind of together on this video. Um, and we're digging into one of my favorite tasks. It's from a resource that I've written called IC Problem Solving. So today you're going to be problem solvers. To start off with, here's a warm up task. So have a look at these pairs of shapes, um, the ones in, in, each, in each box. What's the same and what's different about each pair of shapes? So pause the video and for each pair, see if you can describe what's the same and what's different. Okay, and let, let, let's have a look at some example answers. Here I've got a rhombus and a square. What we've got that's the same is all four sides are the same length for both of the shapes. But of course, what we have is the difference in the angles. You know, we've got four right angles in the in the square. Um, I've got a trapezium and a rectangle, uh, the same. Well, they've both got par at least one pair of parallel lines. And I guess they've got four sides, of course. Um, um, what's different? Well, I guess the, the rectangle's got two pairs of parallel sides um, as opposed to the trapezium. Here, we've got a kite and we've, uh, sorry, a kite here and we've got a diamond here. Um, the diamond I could describe as a rhombus as well. Um, it's got the, the, this one has got four sides the same length. Um, whereas if I look at the kite, it's got it's got different length sides. But you can see the pairs of sides here and the pairs here are equal lengths, and the pairs on this kite here are equal lengths, and this pair are equal lengths as well. Um, and if we look here at the parallelogram and this trapezium here, well again we've got one pair of parallel lines here. Um, but then again, the parallelogram has got two pairs of parallel lines, unlike the trapezium here. We can see that there are similarities and differences. And again, we're looking at and talking about those shape properties. That brings us on to our main task. 
um, which is which is here. So we're going to see if we can think of five different sentences using these sentence stems to describe what's the same about these shapes. So can you think of something that is the same for all of the shapes? What about something that's the same for just four of the shapes? And for three of the shapes? For two of the shapes? What about just for one of the shapes? We, we can think about the angles, the obtuse angles, the right angles, um, the acute angles that we have, and any sets of parallel lines. We might be thinking about symmetry. Mm, be really creative. I wonder how many of those sentences you can complete thinking about what's the same about these shapes here. Now, pause the video, have a go, and then we'll look at some different possible solutions. So let's have a look at some possible answers. Of course, not the only possible answers, but just some possible answers. Well, all of the shapes are quadrilaterals. They've all got four sides. Four of the shapes? Four of the shapes have two pairs of parallel lines. I've marked on the shapes with two pairs of parallel lines. And of course, C only has one pair of parallel lines there. Three of the shapes? Well, three of the shapes have two or more right angles. I've marked the right angles on there. Two of the shapes, it gets trickier now. Two of the shapes have exactly two acute angles. You can see that shape C has one acute angle, but D and E have two acute angles exactly. One of the shapes? Well, one of the shapes has got four lines of symmetry, the square. I've marked on all the lines of symmetry those shapes have there, and it's only shape A that has four lines of symmetry. Of course, I would love to hear other possible answers that you found. Now, there are two tasks you can do if you want to take your learning that little bit deeper today. Task A and task B. So for task A, have a look at those shapes. Can you think about anything that's the same about these shapes? And what about the, exam the three shapes on the right? Can you think about anything that's the same about those three? Um, or you, you might want to have a go at task B here. Now, this is an, a real extend task. We haven't done any work on Venn diagrams at all. But I just wondered if anyone could work out what could the heading be for shape A that is the same about all these shapes here, um, but is not the same as the ones outside that oval there. What about heading B? What could this heading be? What do all these four shapes have in common that these four shapes don't have? Mm. Now, if you do manage to have a go on task B, I would love, love, love to hear what your thoughts are. And as normal, I'll be back tomorrow and we'll continue our shape thinking. We're doing a great job. See you then.